Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to look at something really important for piano players and musicians in general, subdivisions. Okay, so the beat is there for everyone to count, one, two, three, four. But then we can divide that particular beat into how many ever subdivisions we would want, be it two, be it three, or be it four. So what I'm going to do in this video to kind of explain subdivisions because we've done it in a lot of ways on the YouTube channel so far, but always with chords, always with an arpeggio or something like that. Today I thought, let me explain subdivisions with just three notes. We've used three notes in the past just for things like, you know, chord embellishment or accompaniment. But what if we just take three notes over and over, create a pattern and then learn subdivisions along the way. So I hope this lesson will be very good even for the newer pianists out there or the newer musicians. I would encourage you to try this on anything. You could, if you play the bass or the guitar or the flute or whatever, you could try it on pretty much any musical instrument. I don't think this is a very piano centric lesson. So in this lesson, we are first going to look at a melody. Then we are going to look at what the left hand should do, which is very simple, holding the pulse. And then I've prepared a lot of exercises for you on all the subdivision grids, which are available. The eighth note grid, the triplet grid, and finally the semi-quaver or the 16th note grid. So I will be giving you five exercises for each of that and I'm going to break it down in this lesson and for further learning, for further practice, it's all available on our Patreon. It will be available as a downloadable PDF for you to get your hands on. So also consider going to Patreon and, it, and your support will be also great for our channel. Right, so let's get cracking. The three notes under interest right now are going to be, well, I'm just going to hand pick three, just D, E, and F. So you go D, E, F, and I'm going to play it first of all on my pulse. So if I count one, two, three, four, one, two. So what did I do there? I came back. D, E, F, E, D, E, F, E, D. So that's your basic melody. Now, if I have to make this melody more interesting, the best way to do it is to figure out how much inside the beat I want to go. Now, as you know, a beat is a finite time container. It's a finite container where you can have as much musical information as you would want, right? So a beat could last for a specific amount of time. For example, if the tempo of the song is 120 BPM or beats per minute, the length of the beat will be what? Half a second, right? If it's 60 beats per minute, it's going to move like the clock you have in your house or a watch. It moves exactly at the rate of one second per beat. But however, musical time is more customized. We choose the time based on our feeling or based on our genre, based on our you know, desire to make the music we are making. But every beat which flows by one, two, three, four, doesn't have to only be counted as one, two, three, four. It can have subdivisions. So you go one and two and three and four and if you want to divide by two. Okay, so one and two and three and four and so that immediately gives you the license to explore those subdivision beats. You can do something like one and two and three and four and one and two and right and so on and so forth. While if you did not have that, it would just be one, two, three, four. You may not know that you can actually go inside the beat. Sort of like a measuring tape. Someone uses a tape to measure the distance or length of a room, for example, and says it's X amount of feet. But then it could also be feet, uh, maybe 10 feet and uh, 3 inches or something like that. That would make the measurement of a person's height, the length of a room, or if someone's trying to design a door for your house, even more important to get an exact measurement where even 1 inch inch or sub-inch would be extremely critical in that particular job, right? So you go subdivision number one will be where you divide by two, also what we call as quavers, 
and great to say it as one and two and three and four. Now you don't have to play all of these. That's what this lesson is about. I'm going to only take three notes, but we don't have to play so many hits. Just four hits, but I can choose specific notes. For example, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Because I had the and of the two available, I'm playing on the and of the two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. If I did not have that, it would end up being no ends, no division. Okay, so that's quavers or dividing by two. Now, you can even divide by three. One and a two and a three and a four and a ta da da ta da da triple it triple tuck it tuck it tuck it right. So na 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 na. Now if you go da na just these notes D E F E repeating E I F E one and now you can make. Something at the end. One and a two and a two. One and a two and a three and a four and a one. Still a very simple melody from the mechanical point of view. It's just that the beats are getting really embellished now, right? And you now have three units for every beat. So one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a, that's how we count the triplets. Earlier we did one and two and three and four and triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a. So I decided to play the E at the end of the two. Otherwise, earlier if I don't know it existed, it would be one and one, two, three, four. I only have four slots. Now I have what is four threes are four threes are twelve slots. So I can choose four notes or four hits. Over a span of twelve divisions, so I can exhaust all my notes like one and a two and a three and a, like this one and a two and a three, or you can space it out one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four or one and a two one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two one and a two and right. Stuff like that can happen. Now I have more divisions. Okay, the last division system which I wanted to share with you in this lesson. By the way, the lesson is going to go on after this towards some exercises where I've printed the notation for you to read up. So this is just like an introduction or a prelude to all the exercises to come. So again, if you need that PDF guide, it's available for you. Uh, head over to our Patreon and. Um, uh, it's a subscription, a monthly subscription of five five dollars uh, a month. But it'll also not only give you this lesson; it'll give you every single lesson which I have ever taught in the past, I guess, three odd years, and going to teach. And I, my style of teaching involves a lot of my writing notes, important diagrams for you to improve the understanding of the subject so it'll be great if you can head over to our patreon and support our channel okay so now coming to the division of four when you divide by four you go one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. so now you have access to four divisions in each beat so if you're on a four by four time uh, time meter it'll be four fours are 16 slots for you to play your notes on. So I can do one E and a two E and a three E and a. Now I'm not accessing those divisions. Three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. And now if I do like something like this one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a dum tchka dum dum tchka tak tchka dum that's the E of the two. One E and a two E and a three E and a or the E of the two. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a and a four two and a two. So one E and a two E and a three two ta ta ta. One E and a two E and a three E and a and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a and. Okay, so that is like the main goal for this lesson. It's to allow us to 
play over all these subdivisions which are all the commonly used subdivisions by all musicians whether whatever genre whatever instrument we just have these sort of subdivisions divide by 2 divide by 3 divide by 4 so now what we are going to do we are going to take a bunch of exercises which i have notated for you and learn how to play them with just the same old three notes d e f e so we are just going to make these three notes sound a lot more fancy okay then i am going to give you a few more tricks at the end of that and move forward let's get cracking Right, so the first goal would be take the fourth note, one, two, three, four, and kind of anticipate it. Instead of doing it on the four, you're doing it at the end of the three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Completely different melody, right? Three and four and one and two and three and right. So the next thing mentions. anticipate the 3 so 1 2 end of the 2 because the 3 came earlier that's why i've put that arrow there 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and now what shall we do Let's now anticipate the two. Anticipate meaning move it before the two. That will be at the end of the one. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, what do we have? Originally we had one, two, three, four. Now that second note, which is at the two, is going to come before one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and. So what do we have so far? We are anticipating the fourth beat. One and two and three and four. Dum chicka bum chicka dum bum. Now anticipate the three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Sounds like that Pink Floyd song for some reason. Uh, it does kind of yeah. Then you do the anticipating of the two. One and two. we are done with the anticipating part now you can start moving it this side delay so let's start by delaying the one if you delay the one you're not going to have anything at the one it will be one one and two and three and four and one and two that's why i've written the arrow this way that means you're taking that one moving it to the end moving it to the subdivision and Now delay the two. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and got that. So one, three and four remain in their slots. Only the two got messed a bit. It moved this side earlier. It moved that side. Now let's do something with the three. So that will be one, two, three and four. One, two. Three and four. So what has ended up happening? Three went more later or delayed itself. One, two, ba ba. One and two and three and four and one and two and and four and two. Do, do, do. All different sounding melodies. Now, what do we do last? The four goes delayed. One, two, three, four. Three, four, and and two, and three, and four, and, and two, and three. And. Now, if you're getting bored with these notes, take the same rhythm, but maybe take some other notes if you know other notes, which I'm sure you do. But this is just to kind of focus on the divisions and get the timing right. So you can you can kind of explore it further. the same rhythm and four and i'm delaying the four so three 
four. Keep the count going strong. One and two and three and four. Right. So I've done I think five patterns now where I've done all sorts of interesting combos for you. So let's try and count them. So we'll count them and then play them. Okay. Let's move on to the combos. So the eighth note combos include anticipations as well as delays. That means you could have an occurrence where you may have the beat going later or earlier or you may have two beats which are going later or earlier. So it's just my own pattern which I think sounds quite cool. But we take pretty much the same notes. D, E, F, E. Four notes for the whole lesson. Throughout the lesson. So if you take the first pattern you see there. One and two and three and four, and of the two, and of the three, on of the four, on of the one. So one and two and three and turn. Two, two, two. like playing chords fine play some chords right but now i'm kind of getting carried away as i normally end up doing so i will come back to the lesson which is d e f e d e f e d second rhythm which will be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and quite like that Try to clap it first. Pum 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 pum. I've put a rest there. You can observe the rest or let it tail, let it continue if you wish. Tum pum 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 pum. Okay, third rhythm. This I've already taught you. Delaying the three. Then the fourth one will involve clustering all the four and like packing them together. Off. Okay. And what you're also probably observing as a keyboard player, I'm always trying to give myself the pulse, which could be the root or the sa of the song, in this case D, that gives me the timing and un makes me know that, okay, I am getting it on that particular time field where I'm dividing the beat by two. And it just gets you to realize that or puts you in that focus that this is what I have to do, right? So always keep the pulse in the left hand. Never play the piano with one hand. It's always a bad habit. Uh, I understand some of us like to work on one hand at a time, but generally as much as possible, play your instrument with two hands. Right, so the last rhythm printed for you, which is... There we have it. As always, maintain the pulse in the left hand while you do all these rhythms. So those were five eighth note combos for you. So we've divided this lesson now into two parts. In the next video, we look at triplets and uh, 16th note subdivisions, which are also called as semi-quavers. So if you haven't already practiced the eighth note combos really well you could pause the video you could just take some time practice the eighth note patterns improvise come up with your own stuff and see how it goes uh, another thing i would urge you to do since i am on instagram would be you could record some of your exercises or anything you'd like to do a lot of you are doing some of my riffs on youtube which is which is really nice to see i'm getting a lot of your videos via email and other such platforms it It'll be great if you can just put it up on your Instagram, tag me. I will definitely go through it as much as I can and perhaps even share it on my on, on my handle. So uh, do your work, whatever I do in these lessons. Try to do something and interact with me via, uh, via the Instagram option. Right, guys? And if you haven't already, it's very important. We'll be releasing a lot more videos, including part two of the same one. So it's very important that right now, hit that bell icon for notifications. A lot of you have subscribed who are watching this lesson. That's great. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button as well. So subscribe and bell.
okay and the notes a lot of you are asking where are the notes well it's on patreon look at all our descriptions and it's right there okay and if you find that you're a little bit more of a beginner on the instrument we have our virtual courses where you can learn foundational stuff with me and any instrument really not just piano we have guitar violin drums bass vocals and so on so you could write to us fill up the form there's a form in the description you could also consider doing our members only foundation course which you will find on our youtube channel just go to the home page uh, and you'll find it there right guys cheers thanks for watching see you in the next one